Now, sometimes you don't want to save everything in Swift data. So how do we prevent saving data that we don't want? Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the transient macro to see how to prevent saving properties and also as well, how we can easily inspect this too using some helpful tools. Now I'll go over a nice use case we can use, which we'll add in by, you know, adding a counter to our to-do list app within this to-do list app free course. So without further ado, let's get this money. Now, if you're wondering where this beautiful app came from, it's actually part of my Swift data course. That's actually on my YouTube channel for free. Now in this video, what I want to do is I actually want to add a way to basically view a, well, track how many times a screen was viewed but i don't want to you know put this counter in swift data so how can i you know how can i do that well we can easily do this by actually basically changing our models and just adding a transient property so if you watched my previous video in this course where we went over migrations you'll you know this won't be a surprise to you but if you've not saw it i highly recommend you check it out and i'll put it on the screen here so we're going to go to our model in our v3 schema and what I'm going to do is on our item here, we're going to add a brand new property called item view count. Now at this moment in time, what will happen is that this will actually store it in, you know, Swift data and try to create a new column to save this data, but I don't want to do that. So what I need to do is I need to mark this with at transient. And now this will prevent this property from being stored, you know, within our data model. In order to see this in action, what we can do is we can actually go to our update to do view and in our on appear now we can actually just increment that counter by one and basically print it out to the console so after here we'll just say item dot item view count plus equals one and we'll just put a print statement now in order to see this in action what we're going to do is actually run this on the simulator. So let's just run this. And the first thing you'll notice is that even though we added a brand new property, our app did not crash. And that's because, you know, it doesn't, there's actually not been a change to our Swift data model. But let's say if I go into this item now, and if I look in the console logs, you'll see that as I start to update and go into this screen a few times, the count is going up. And if I go to a different one, you'll see that the count is also being managed. So our model, well, our data is being, you know, persisted in memory, but it's not actually being committed to our database. And we can actually see this in action by using a tool called Core Data Lab, which I actually cover in a video again in this course. So let's just take this out of full screen and I'm going to open up Core Data Lab. And if I go to browse iOS simulators, and if I just choose the simulator for the iPhone 15 Pro, and we go to our to-dos, you'll now see that when I go to the entity for item, if I double click on it, you'll see that in the entity description, there is actually no reference to item view count anywhere. So by using that transient, it's not saved it at all in our entity, which is exactly what we wanted. But if you're enjoying this video, why don't you actually check out the free course on my channel for this Swift Data series that you can actually find it in the playlist section on my YouTube channel. And I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel as well. And then, you know, leave a comment if you're enjoying what I'm doing so far. I like to, you know, interact with y'all. So we can actually create a transient property as well by using computed properties. So by default, computed properties actually are transient. So we don't need to use the macro at all. Now I'm going to do this by adding it to our category. So what I want to do is on our category, I want to show the number of items that it actually has. So if we go to our model, I'm going to create a computed property called item count. I would in here, it's just going to be items dot count. And if it's nil, we'll just put zero. Cool. So we can now use this on our, you know, screen where we create categories. So I'm going to go to our create category view. And in our for each here, where we have our categories, I'm now going to change this to use the label content Swift UI view. So we have our label, which will be our cat. We have our label, which will be our category name. And then we'll have our count, which will be, you know, the number of items in it. So now let's just run our app and see what happens. And if I hit the plus button here where we can create a new category, you'll now see that we see the number and we see one for family. If I actually dismiss the screen, you'll see that actually this is on family. So if I actually update this as well and change it to routine and hit update, 
and then go back to the category screen, you'll now see that routine and family both have incremented value. So we're now able to actually not, you know, get the number of items. So I can actually go back to my, you know, data model here and I can actually refresh this. If I go to category and double click on it, you'll see as well that it only has title as a property. So we're not persist in that item count either. So this is really nice and exactly what we want. So if you want to learn more about Swift Data, I actually have a playlist on my channel, like I said before, that you can actually check out as well as other content on my channel as well. So, you know, it, you can learn all about iOS here and Swift UI. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.